we also have what I call the necessary infrastructure, and we've been fortunate that we have the connectivity infrastructure, which I is equivalent to the roads. So if you don't have roads, you will not reach your destination. So I believe that today, apart from the US and China, right, India has the best digital connectivity infrastructure, 4G, 5G, and broadband in yeah. the world. Yeah. Right. When people talk about geo, and you know, we said we geo took India from number 158 in the world to number one in the world in eight years. And we, as a single company, didn't know anything about this domain, right? But today, we are the largest data company in the world, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Our volumes are equivalent to AT, NTT, Mobile, and Verizon combined. Yeah. So, I, I would I would say I would say uh, uh, size of local market is quite an advantage. <laughs> but let me tell you, like the most satisfying piece and. Well, having one and a half and, billion and the customers best part, would do it. The best part's still coming. That's yes. pretty satisfying. So the most satisfying piece is that as Geo, we delivered about 16 exabytes of data this year, or we will deliver this year. And the average, in the US, you pay $5 a GB. In the world average for data is about three and a half dollars a GB. In India, Geo delivers data at 15 cents a GB. I really love, and um, uh, when I met Modi G, the first time he asked me to meet his cabinet uh, was to, this, this has got to be about six years ago, he asked me to address his cabinet about artificial intelligence. And I was so surprised, it was the, literally the first time any government leader, uh, any national leaders asked me to address uh, his cabinet on um, uh, this particular topic. It was long before anybody was talking about artificial intelligence. And my last visit with him, he said, he said this, and it was really quite profound. He said, I, I was explaining to him uh, the concept of uh, AI infrastructure and why it's essential for every nation to have their own AI infrastructure, like their own communication, their internet infrastructure, their roads, uh, elect energy, of course, and of course, intelligence should be part of your infrastructure, and the manufacturing of intelligence should be part of your infrastructure. And, and he said this, he said, he said, it makes completely, complete sense that India should manufacture its own AI, manufacture your own AI. You should not outsource, you should not export data to import intelligence. That India should not export data to import intelligence. And he said... Absolutely. And, and Mo Modiji said, it's like India should not just export flour to import bread. We should add value to the data ourselves. And, and, uh, and the partnership uh, that we have is to start that journey, to build the underlying infrastructure so that India could have your own infrastructure. You surely have your own computer science expertise. And you also have your data. You have a giant population of users uh, to, to drive that flywheel. And then one, one more comment. Uh, this is the thing that, that, that he, was, he was most inspired by uh, six years ago. He said, he said that artificial intelligence has the ability to elevate um, the entire population of India. And the reason for that, I was talking earlier to him about the fact that there are so few people in the world who knows how to program a computer. Programming is not easy 
uh, here uh, in India is the largest population of any pro of programmers in the world. However, still programming is not easy. Most people don't know how to program Python or C++ or you know, Pascal or Fortran but, or Java, but everyone knows how to program an intelligence. And so the ability to program computers is available to a small population, but the ability to program AI is something that everyone can do. And if, if AI could be put into the hands of every citizen, it would elevate and put into the hands of everyone this incredible capability you and I get the benefit from called computers. And this computer could now benefit everybody in society. I have, again, great respect for my friend Mark Zuckerberg, because by bringing open source to the world of intelligence, he has given, you know, everybody yeah. the opportunity to participate in this revolution. Yeah, and Lama 3 has activated every single company, every single industry around the world. It's incredible. And what you have done with Lama 3 also, right? Thank you. Is, yeah. And all of us, we can build on top of that. And to my mind, this move of Mark will be written in the history, right? When we look at it 100 years from now, yeah. that open source, all the big things in the world have, a, op, have helped on open source. Li Linux was open source. Right. And I think that uh, at least cloud from an computer. India point of view, yeah, cloud right, we can use Llama as a base model. It allows all of us mm -hmm. to develop on top of a state of the art uh, model and surely then we can fine tune, train, retrain, do everything else. And I am sure that there is somebody in this audience who is very bright and very young and we will have, right, into the future an Indian model as you very rightly said, which might be 10x of Lama.